If you're watching this video and you're not yet working in the field of cybersecurity, there's a 99% chance you've been using Hack the Box and try hack me completely wrong. When it comes to hands-on practice to learn cybersecurity, these platforms stand out as some of the best options on the market. In fact, I still actively use Hack the Box to this day as a supplement to help me stay current in the field. However, where many people go wrong is that they fail to recognize that there are also many other factors that play into whether or not someone can land a job in cybersecurity. Several years ago, you could get away with ignoring most of these other factors that I'm going to share with you in this video, and you'd probably still land a job. Now, in the past, I've heard of many people that were able to at least land an interview just by using these platforms alone and listing that on their resume. But after getting reached out to by so many of you guys, I've come to realize that this is no longer the case. And here are some of the reasons why. These platforms, as they continue to grow and popularity, now there's a lot more people using them and a lot more people putting them on their resume, trying to land jobs, of course. So what used to be a phenomenal thing to help you stand out is now a little bit more of just a commonplace thing. It's even a, a bit of a meme among some of the recruiters when people put things like try hack me, top 1% on try hack me. I know a lot of recruiters express a concern on that and they see that constantly. And if they are a little bit savvy, then they know that, hey, this doesn't necessarily mean that someone is super skilled at the job and is experienced, but they just basically did a lot of rooms on try hack me. Now you should still continue to stack the cards in your favor and put stuff like that on your resume if that is the case, right? If you've done a lot of rooms on try hack me or if there's some kind of metric on any of the CTF sites that you're doing that will help vouch for you. But understand that, especially with these platforms, that does not help you stand out as much as it used to. The other big contributing factor to all this is the state of the economy and the cybersecurity job market today. You know, how that has shifted in recent years. A few years ago, it was a lot more simple to get a job as a complete beginner in cybersecurity, in even for software developers and things like that. And now here's the thing, there's still a massive shortage of qualified people for cybersecurity jobs, but the key word here is qualified. So you need to keep upskilling yourself, hence the name Elevate Cyber. And so if you can keep learning and leveling up, that's where you're going to hit all that opportunity. A lot of people are fighting over these entry level jobs. That is definitely something that's more difficult right now. Getting remote jobs as your first job is more difficult right now than it was. But notice I'm saying more difficult than. I'm not saying impossible. It's still very much possible to land a job in the field as a newcomer. And hopefully with some of the ideas that I'm gonna present in this video, that can help get you started there. And the next issue that you run into, if you're only doing let's say hack the box or CTFs and try hack me and hack the box is you run into developing this, what I call the CTF only mindset, the capture the flag only mindset. In that mindset, it's where you're really trapped into only, you know, this overemphasis on remote code execution and things that you would typically look for in the CTFs, but you kind of overlook naturally the things that are less common in CTFs, things that maybe will never lead to remote code execution, but the company still very much cares about. Just to illustrate this, I remember on my previous job at Dell, we were interviewing a candidate that had done hundreds of machines on Hack the Box, and he actually had the OSC E3 certification as well. If you guys are not aware of that, basically, if you think of the company Offensive Security that owns OSCP, there is a number of certs that are at a higher level than OSCP. You have OSWE for web, you have OSED for binary exploitation, and you have OSEP, which is like the direct sequel to OSCP. And if you get all three of them, you get this blanket cert called the OSCE3. So on paper, this guy was super advanced, but here's the thing. This guy went into this interview and it was me and someone that was even more senior than me. He was passing the interview with flying colors. He was able to answer all the questions. However, afterwards, when I synced up with my coworker on whether or not we should recommend this guy for the next round, I was all about it. I was like, yeah, let's do it. He seems pretty knowledgeable. But what my coworker said absolutely shocked me there. He said, yeah, you know, he did really well on the interview, but not just because he was studying for all these certifications. Really, this guy doesn't have too much actual experience if you look at his resume and if you hear you know, him talking about his experience in the field, we can tell that he's a little bit too junior for what we're looking for from the, for this role. So even though he had all these credentials, he's got a lot of experience on Hack the Box and these CTFs, and he has an advanced resume on paper, he just doesn't quite have the experience that we're looking for. So I'm not going to recommend him for the next round. 
And that's when it really sunk into me how important it is to get experience. And, and we'll dive into that in, in a second. Okay, great. So now how can you actually stand out? I mentioned experience. Well, first of all, let's start at the beginning here. You need to also, in addition to doing these platforms, is you need to start learning the language of cybersecurity. You want to learn a lot of the lingo because there's so many terms that we throw around all the time. And as a complete beginner, that could be quite a challenge. Now, what I would recommend for this is to create a separate account on X or Twitter and just follow a bunch of the different uh, people in the space there and see what people are talking about in cybersecurity. If you're interested in the offensive side, then I would highly recommend to go ahead and give me a follow at Elevate Cyber on X and you can just go off my follow list, start following the same people just so you have like uh, some good accounts that you can use as a starting point. And from there, you know, branch off, follow whatever accounts you want to. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that I follow is tailored around pen testing, red teaming, exploit development and that stuff. Uh, but that would be a really good place to start. Also, I would recommend to start reading blog posts in cybersecurity as well. You can create an account on Feedly if you want to know how to do that and set up your own cybersecurity feed. Go ahead and check out the video that I made on that after you watch this one. Watch this one to the end first. But I did one on how I personally keep up with cybersecurity news, and that will uh, kind of walk you through how you can get started with uh, setting up your own feed to read these blog posts. Now, the other thing that I have to mention, of course, in this video that everyone's probably wondering is what about certifications? Yes, I would say for most people, it makes a lot of sense. But here's where a lot of people go wrong. They pursue too many certifications. So you want to pair this hack the box and try hack me experience with certifications as well. But I would say one to two max, no more than two, because a lot of people, they fall down this trap of the constantly moving goalposts. They're like, well, if I have like these five certs, then there's no way that uh, I wouldn't be able to get interviews. And here's the thing. <laughs> For one, they're probably not going to stick to that because it's going to take a lot longer than they're thinking. And then number two, actually, if you have a lot of redundant certs, it is diminishing returns, very much so. And, you know, case in point with the guy that had OSCE3, he had OSCP and then all three of those other certs. And you know, guess what? He didn't get passed to the next round. Now, granted, that was for a senior level position. So you might have a little bit easier time at the entry level, but still, I can tell you that there's a lot of people in my DMs right now that have a lot of certs, good ones as well, like OSCP, and they're not landing any interviews right now. And the next thing, of course, you need to focus on is the technical skill side of things. So you want to focus on what I call the core three, network security, web security, active directory security as well. And the nice thing is if you're going through and doing hack the box and try hack me, they're pretty much going to cover you here. You're going to be good on that front, but you also want to have technical skills that are specifically aimed at helping you stand out. These are things that are high in demand, but low in supply. And it's kind of up to you to choose what these are. A couple of recommendations that I like to shout out often is cloud security and AI security. Or if you don't want to go into some of those more fringe ones, you can opt to go very deep on one of the other previous technical skills I mentioned. So you can go a lot deeper than the average person in network security, if that's your thing, or in web security or in active directory. Just choose one of these. And the point of it is to help you stand out because the most common issue that I've noticed as someone that was on the other side of interviewing these candidates is that everyone's resume looks like carbon copies of each other. So this will help cover you on this front. The next thing you want to concern yourself with is, okay, I have the technical skills. That's only one part of the equation. I also need the portfolio to actually be able to showcase that I know what I know. So in building your portfolio, what I would highly recommend for cybersecurity is you want to build them out with actual security reports, not just walkthroughs. And here's the thing. A lot of people that do tons of hack the box and try hack me, maybe they go and they do the extra step and they do write ups on some of the boxes. That's great. Look, that's great. But what I'm talking about here is a step beyond that. Instead of just a walkthrough showing other hackers how you solve the box, what if instead you turned it into a full on pen test report? This is especially going to be helpful if you want to get into the offensive side. If you want to get into the defensive side, there's reports that SOC analysts write as well. Set up a lab, do a report on that as well. Look, if you're going to get hired on in cybersecurity, the product that you produce is not the hacking. It's not a lot of the, the fancy stuff that is fun to learn. It's actually writing the report because the report is what gets sent to the client. And that is what says, hey, this was the outcome of the security test. Or if you're on the defensive side, maybe this was the outcome of investigating this incident or whatever. It's very crucial that you develop this skill set and that you are able to showcase that you've developed this skill set. If you're doing this on your own, I will say this is going to be very difficult just because you don't know what you don't know. So what I would highly recommend, and 
look, a lot of people are going to hear me say this. They're going to skip this. They're going to skip this step. Maybe they're even going to skip ahead in the video. But what I will say is it is absolutely crucial that you don't skip this step of having your report reviewed by another professional in the field. This is so important because you're probably going to make, I'm not even probably, I've seen hundreds of these reports. I've mentored hundreds of students. And in every case, in the first report that they ever wrote, there were tons of mistakes that we had to correct. So you're not going to be able to recognize that if you don't have a second set of eyes, you know, looking at it that is aware of what a professional report looks like. So have them work with you on getting it really up to snuff. Now, if you can do that and then you get it in front of someone on the cybersecurity side, that's absolutely going to stand out to them because they're going to notice that as well. And actually, that's one of the secrets that I've used to help get people jobs in the field straight in cybersecurity. I've had people that were interviewing for completely different roles, you know, before people that were interviewing for software development roles and because they expressed their interest in cybersecurity and showed them a professional report that I'd helped them with. And then the company came back to them and said, Hey, we actually have an opening on our pen testing team. We're really impressed with your report. We'd like to give you an offer. I was, I was shocked when I heard that, honestly. So if you're watching this video and you're like, ah, yeah, I doubt that or whatever, go and watch some of the testimonial videos and stuff on my website. Because honestly, if that, if I didn't have that experience with my students helping them with that, I, I probably wouldn't believe that either. But that goes to show you just how powerful this can be. You want to look at how you can create content as well uh, to vouch for you. That's another huge opportunity. And it doesn't have to be YouTube videos. You can make YouTube videos by all means if you want, but you could also do it in the form of blog posts. You can write blog posts on your learnings and stuff like that and share it out. All this stuff is going to factor in. But also, like I was mentioning earlier, experience is a huge piece of it. So I would say if you're doing this on your own, reach out to someone you know and just offer a free pen testing service if you want to get into the offensive side or a free security service and see if you can do it on a free basis. Put that on your resume and yeah, you can even list it under a company, even open an LLC if you want to. It's really easy to do if you're in the US. Beyond that, you want to practice your interviewing skills, right? Look up sets of common questions and answers online. There's many sites that you can use to do this. And really though, the learning is going to happen when you get in the interview. So there's no way around in this case, the fact that you're just going to have to fail tons of interviews, that's going to help you improve. And I know that can be really heart wrenching to hear, but you need to reframe failure in your mind. Otherwise you're going to get discouraged and you're probably going to give up. The reality is that I like to make the golden gumball analogy, right? Think of a gumball machine at the mall, you know, like in the early 2000s, I don't know if they have them at the mall still, but think of, you know, the different colored gumballs. Imagine that somewhere in that gumball machine are a set of golden gumballs. And if you get the golden gumball, you win, right? So you know that at a certain number of putting quarters in, eventually you turn the thing and eventually you're going to get that golden gumball, right? You put the first quarter in, turn the little knob and a gumball comes out. The chance of that being the golden gumball, pretty low, but you know, without a doubt that at some number of quarters inserted into the machine, eventually you're going to get that golden gumball. If you view the same thing here, failure is walking away from the gumball machine. That's literally the only way you don't get the golden gumball. If you keep putting in those quarters, eventually success is inevitable. So if you kind of reframe that in your mind, I think it's going to help you a lot during this process as well. So if this sounds like a lot of work and something that's going to take a lot of time, I mean, you're absolutely correct. For me personally, when I was learning this stuff without any sort of guidance or direction, just going off on my own, it took me about three years of self-study. That was back before the job market is as tricky as it is today. And so if you're looking for a done for you system, something that touches on all the points that I listed in this video and has it neatly laid out for you so that you can just focus on executing and fulfilling everything, then I'm excited to announce that I've released my cybersecurity bootcamp and mentorship program. This is a one-year program that is going to cover all those bases and help you get a job in cybersecurity within six to 12 months. So if that sounds appealing to you, definitely check the link in the description below fill out a brief survey. And if you qualify, then I'll help get you on the path. But definitely act quickly if this is something you're on the fence about, because fair warning, I will be going up on my prices this year, just because there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one aspects of the program where I'm working with you directly, doing mock interviews and things like that. So as more people join, the cost to fulfill this goes up for me. So I'll be going up on my prices as well. But if you're just more interested in how I got into the field and what my journey was like, and want some more insights there, Definitely check out the video on screen right now where I cover my experience of getting into this field, you know, way back a decade ago. So I'll see you guys right over in that video.